bless you. We thank you for that prayer. Amen. And we believe God hear us when we pray. We certainly thank God for each and every one of you who are online tonight for Bible study. Amen. You thought it not robbery to call in for Bible study on tonight. And I thank God for you. We're going to get right into the word of the Lord. I know that season we're in, everybody's ripping and running, but we're going to go directly into the word of the Lord on tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, two verses of scripture, verse four and five. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse four through five. <clears throat> and it reads, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Let me read it again, that fourth and fifth verse again. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. We thank God for the reading of the word of the Lord. On this past Sunday, Elder, Creech, Elder Chris preached, he's dealt with distractions. And I'm going to go on, continue on in that vein. He preached and he dealt with distractions. But I want you to know tonight that the enemy of your soul, that enemy is Satan and his imps, will send you distractions to take your mind off of the things of God. He will distract you. You may say, make up in your mind that, I'm going to spend at least five minutes or 10 minutes, no exorbitant long time in prayer, not an hour reading the word of God, but I'm going to take five minutes and read the scriptures every day. But the enemy, that Satan, will come along and send a distraction for the exact time that you said that you were going to take time to read and study the word of the Lord. If he does nothing more than put something good on TV that would catch your eye, and we would sit there for two hours and watch a movie, glory to God, being distracted by what's on the TV, make believe world versus what we told God that we were going to do. Now, the defi dictionary definition of distraction is a thing that prevents someone from giving full attention to something else or extreme agitation of the mind or emotions. Distractions will agitate your mind. It will mess with your emotions. My God, it will take your attention from what you need to have your attention on. And when I look in the Bible and when I look in the Bible um, dictionary for distraction, it means to literally to draw apart to pull in different directions and to separate. Hence to divide, to separate, and to throw into confusion. Sometimes you're running, wondering why you are so confused about something or why you just can't understand or it look like you got a million things going through your head. That is because the devil is, has sent distractions to attack your mind to get you off of the things of God. The biblical definition of, of, of distraction also says to draw towards different objects, to draw you away from God, to fill you with different considerations. Maybe if I do this, it'll work. Maybe if I do that, or if I try this, or if I try that. You got so many if analysis going that you're not listening for the voice of God to hear what God will have what would God would have you to do? Distractions come, according to the Bible, to perplex and to confound and to harass you 
and to distract your mind. Distractions, distractions. When we look at our current world, as the, the world that we are living in now, it seems as if the minds of the people are distracted. Now, I don't know about you, just driving your car, you're going from point A to point B. How many times have you seen people running the red light? Distracted. On the phone, looking down, but running through the red light. I know from personal experience, the light is green for me, but somebody else that was distracted ran directly through the red light. Or how, how many of you have heard of parents becoming so distracted that they left their child, they left their baby in a hot car during the summertime? What has happened? That the enemy sent a distraction. Sent a distraction. The distraction, I got to get into my job. It's distracted you from your child sitting in the back seat, waiting to go to daycare. This is what the enemy would do to us. But what about the times that, now I know this is me, that you have become distracted and the night before or the day, the morning of, you laid out everything that you needed to take with you. Glory to God. You got it laid out. I've got it laid out on the island so that when I walk by there, I'm going to pick it up when I go out that door. You, you put it out. You laid it out. That important specific item that you needed only to leave out without it. Why? You became distracted. You became distracted. The enemy is sending distractions. Josh Myers wrote a book some years ago entitled Battlefield of the Mind. Battlefield of the Mind. We have a war going on in our mind. And the enemy, Satan, he sends distractions to the people of God. This is how he sends us distractions. Go see, no. Now, if we say that we're saved and we are following the Lord, he knows that he's not going to get us to drink a fifth. He knows that we're not going to smoke marijuana. He knows that we're not going to take um, a Percocet unnecessarily. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. So what does he do to distract the people of God? He attacks the mind. He attacks your mind. My God, it take you take us uh, two hours to unwind at night before we can finally fold those off to sleep. Why? Because the enemy is attacking our mind. But when we look at the word of God, the word of God tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, casting down imaginations. Let me stop right there. The enemy will build up stuff that ain't even true in your mind. Will build up things that's not true in your mind. Casting down imaginations whew, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Watch out for that spirit that you know everything. You know more than God. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. The Bible did say that he that exalted himself shall be a base. And he that humbled himself shall be exalted. That fourth verse of 2 Corinthians again, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity, bringing into captivity, forcefully taking every thought to the obedience of Christ. And let's look at what that scripture means. It means that we have a chance to do something about all those thoughts that are not pleasing to God before they enter the heart and become a part of us. Because first of all, it's got to develop in the mind. And if it stay in the mind, it's going to ruminate and it's going to reach the heart. And when it reached the heart, what the Bible said in Proverbs, out of the heart flows the issues of life. Uh -huh. Before it entered the heart, it will become a part of you. So that's why it is necessary that we take captive 
every thought that is against the word of God and bring it into captivity. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. If I think that I'm worthless, what do I become? Worthless. If I think, let's just be simple. If I think that um, nobody like me, what happens? I will become, so is he. My personality will become so much so that nobody wants to be around me. As a man thinks, so is he. Now, for those of us who have problems about that, well, you know, I'm just the least, I'm, yes, I'm one of God's children. Yes, I'm one of his least ones. But then again, I know who I am in God. I know who I am because I am beautifully and marvelously made. You've got to get the word of God in you to attack the devil. As a man thinks, so is he. If you think you're going to be broke all your life, you will be broke. That's why I don't say I'm broken. I don't have nothing. Just say I'm in transition. But thanks be unto God, it's coming my way. Glory to God. I'm not going to stick there with I'm broke or I don't have or I, I am not qualified for something. The God that I serve, the God that I serve, that he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I can ask or think. As a man thinks, so is he. You want to move up. You, you want to do better. Yes, I'm satisfied where I am, but I know God's got something better for me. Come on now. As a man thinks, so is he he. Mm. What we think about is crucial to who we are. What we think about is crucial to who we are. And, and think about this. If what you're thinking about is important, is crucial to actually who you become, that simply means that I cannot be associated with everything that is negative. If you are negative, you got to go. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to feed you at arm length, but I can't stay there because that's not who I am. Superintendent Rouse had this saying, association brings on assimilation. You associate with the chickens, you will stay in the chicken yard. But when you say, I'm going to soar with the eagles, glory to God, I'm going to soar with the eagle. I'm not staying down here in the yard with the chicken. I know we feel comfortable there because that's what we know. We're inside our little box and that's what we know. That's what we understand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. That's why my, 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 my husband used to say, he don't care how many, whoever come in, potentates and all that. I'm a child of the king. I am royalty. Let me get back in here. Distraction, distraction. But the devil will send these thoughts to your mind. Yes, I messed up. But don't you know, devil, when the Lord saved me, he took all my sins. He took all that filth. He took all that mess that I was doing and threw it into the sea of forgetfulness. And I'm not going out there to get it no more. He put it under the blood and I refused to pick it back up. Glory to God. Yes, I was a streetwalker. Yes, I was a drug addict. Yes, I was a liar. Yes, I was a cheater. Glory to God. Yes, 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 I did all this. But when the Lord saved me, you ought to see me now. Glory to God. Uh-huh. The devil wouldn't want you, want you to think that that's who you are. That that's not who I am. I'm a child. You got to know who you are. I'm a child of the king. What we think about is crucial to who we are. Now, scientists, they don't agree how many thoughts we, they can't agree on how many thoughts we have each day. You can't even write down every thought that you have throughout the day. But you can all agree that there are thousands of thoughts that run through our mind daily. And for instance, many times on Sunday morning, we have to do the, go the cheerleading route because your mind is entertaining scenes that has happened or that you think is going to happen in the future. What? The devil has sent distractions to keep you from praising God. Who we are is shaped moment by moment by the thoughts we choose to let into our mind and into our heart. Let me read that again. 
who we are is shaped moment by moment by the thoughts we choose to let into our mind and heart. What you choose to let ruminate in your mind that will go to your heart is shaped by who you become. But how can we, because you say, well, pastor, how can I control the thousands of thoughts I got entering into my mind every day? What do we do with thoughts that are not pleasing to God? You know you wanted to slap that person and you don't cuss them out in your mind. No, it didn't come out your mouth, but you did it in your mind. Woo, glory to God. How can we in reality take every thought captive? Well, let me tell you how we can do it. Let me get a sip of water first. We can take every thought captive, but we've got to realize this one thing, that it is a battle. Taking every thought captive is a battle. That's what we must first step realize, how we can take it captive. Because if you think that you can get control of your thought life easily, you are slowly mistaken. Often our thoughts have to be focused on the regular task that we must accomplish daily. You know, if when I was working before I retired, I had a, 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 a routine of what I did in the morning. And I focused on those tasks. When I got into my office, there were certain things that I needed to do. I needed to check to see what happened before, what happened overseas, what, where, where, where was my product at. However, as we go throughout the day, we can catch thoughts and attitudes mm. as we go. When we left home, we was prayed up. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, 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 but as we go throughout the day, here come those thoughts. And with those thoughts come attitudes that are contrary to the will of God. We can, but we can keep them from gaining control of our mind and heart. When we look at 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5, 10th chapter 4, verses 4 and 5, Paul explained how this is possible. He said, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds, casting down arguments, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Listen to this, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So can you get control of your thought life? Yes, you can. According to this verse, bringing every thought, every one of those thoughts, into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Yes, it's written, it is written that we need to battle to keep our thoughts pure, but it is also written that we have weapons to fight to keep our thoughts pure. But we've got to be willing to use the weapons that God has given us to keep our thought life pure. For example, this is an example. You may have the opportunity to take your thoughts into captivity. Let's take, for instance, on your job, the supervisor or, or someone that is over you that is a little bit higher grade than you gives you a task to do or tell you that you need to do this or you need to do that and you don't particularly care for that task. Then comes the negative complaining thoughts, thought coming to your mind. They better leave me alone. I'll leave you. I'll get me another job. Negative and complaining thoughts. You haven't said anything to the person, but it's happening. It's happening in your mind. And some of us, we have a whole production going on in our mind. Those thoughts are temptations. But get this, you have a chance to do something about them before they enter your heart and become a part of you. This is when you choose to obey the words of God, such as in Philippians. If you don't get another scripture I read tonight, Philippians chapter two, verse 
16. I'm going to read the NIV version first and then the King James version. Philippians 2 and 14. Do all things without grumbling or complaining. Right where you are in your house, repeat after me. Philippians chapter 2, verse 14. Do all things without grumbling or complaining. They said, well, I don't think I want to read the NIV version. Well, I'll give you the King James version. It says, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the first step you can take these thoughts captive. Mm. When you choose to obey the word of God, do all things without grumbling or compa complaining. Now, when you make this choice that I'm going to choose to obey the word of God, it's a real battle. It's a real battle. But the weapons of our warfare, now what are the weapons of our warfare? Warfare, the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost are here to help us. Now, don't you know, the word of God say, it is sharper than any two-edged sword cutting asunder. Some things you got to apply the word of God to. To, to be able to take captive of your thought life, you got to uh, be able to apply the word of God. Now, how can you apply the word of God if you don't know the word of God? That means that you've got to take time to read and study the word of God. Well, you know, pastor, I don't like to read. Well, don't you read when you go to grocery stores to see what's on the can? To see what's in that box of cereal? To see how many calories that's in that bag? Reading is fundamental. I don't like to read. The word of God is our life life. All of us ought to spend some time reading the word of God. And when we pray to God in, a, in the moment that we feel that, you know, our mind has been attacked, we can receive the Holy Ghost power to keep our thoughts pure. That's when you take every thought captive. You're reading the word of God, the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and prayer can take every thought captive. You say, well, pastor, I try. Well, when the scripture said, Philippians said, do all without grumbling or complaining. Many times we don't take it captive because we enjoy complaining. We enjoy murmuring. We, we enjoy grumbling. Mm hmm. That's, that's, that's why we can't take it because we there's something on the inside of us, that inner man that has not died yet, that like chaos. The Bible said, I will keep you in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me. My peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Lord, I need peace. Take, for instance, the other, I, I, I believe Monday or Tuesday, whenever I saw a comment, uh, I was notified of a comment that someone said on, on our live that I need I'm doing wrong because I'm a woman and I'm a pastor. The Shirley in me wanted to fight. Woo! But the Holy Ghost stepped up and said, Jesus said, if they don't receive you, shake the dust from your feet and keep it moving. Come on now. I had to take that thought captive, what I really wanted to respond. And I had to say, thank you for viewing. Please know that we are praying for you. Glory to God. I had to take that thought captive right there because in me, I wanted to say we are in 2021. Glory to God. And this and that and this and that. But the Holy Ghost stepped up. And I had said, Lord, give me what to say. He just said, thank him. Thank him for viewing. And then let him know that we are praying for him. That's it. End of discussion. And when I shook the dust with my feet, what did I do? I blocked it. Come on now. But some of us would be going tit for tat. You can't go tit for tat with the devil. But you got to use the word of God. Don't you know when Jesus, when Jesus was, was he, he, Jesus prepared for war when he fasted and prayed. And we had to prepare ourselves through fasting and praying before the thoughts come. When Jesus was tempted by the devil to turn the stones into bread, and we find that in Matthew 4 and 4, Jesus said, but it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. But Jesus himself 
use the word of God and turn the tables on the devil. That's why I'm telling you, people of God, we have got to learn the word of God. We have got to get the word of God down on the inside of us. Jesus armed himself by reading and meditating on the word of God. And that by him doing that, it helped him. That scripture came up in him. It came out of him. Because he was prayed up. He shown up had the power to smack that devil down. Glory to God. Oh, yes, he did. Let me tell you something. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We don't win this warfare when we use our fists. When we use our mouth, we're not winning the warfare then. But I win the warfare when I use the word of God. Put the word on that devil. Glory to God. It's the devil, you got to flee. You are going in the name of Jesus. You will lose me now in the, oh, Lord, let me get back to my thing. I said, prepare for war. You prepare for war by studying and reading the word of God and by praying. And then you got to understand that the word of God is your weapon is your weapon. The word of God is your weapon. For example, if you're a person who is prone to anger, you can arm yourself with this scripture right here found in James. Because you know if you got a temple or not. Sometimes my husband used to say, you're saved, but you're not all the way delivered. That temper hasn't been delivered yet. But you, what you can do, you can arm yourself with the word of God. James said in James 1, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, so then my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man ooh-wee, does not produce the righteousness of God. Let me read that again. If you got an anger problem, you got a hot temper problem, read James 1, chapter, chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man, that means the anger, anger of man, does not produce the righteousness of God. These words of God are our weapon. And they will give us the power to take all impure thoughts captive. Say, so, well, what is impure thoughts? Anything that's not pleasing to God is an impure thought. If it's not pleasing to God, it is an impure thought. And we must realize that God knows our thoughts. He doesn't wait until we say it with our mouth. He knows that when we're entertaining it in our minds, because while we're entertaining it in our minds, it is going down to our heart. And when it gets in the heart, it becomes a strong hole. Now, transformation by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit can give, can give us grace and power to bring thoughts into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And in the process of bringing our thoughts into captivity, we become transformed into the person who God wants us to be. I'm not perfect, but through the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to bring those thoughts into captivity. And by doing so, I become the person that God wants me to be. Now, the primary point of 2 Corinthians, those scriptures that I read, is spiritual warfare. But when you look at that fourth and fifth verse, what leads up to that statement, that fourth verse, is that in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians 10, Paul states that though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. That is, we do not rely on our human ingenuity or our man-made plans to bring us to victory. I can't rely on Shirley Rouse to bring me victory. I've got to rely on Jesus Christ, the word of God, and the power of the Holy Ghost because my flesh, my humanness is powerless against the wiles of the devil. You cannot fight with the devil under your own strength. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. 
In verse 4, Paul mentions the strongholds or the fortresses that are destroyed by God's power. These strongholds are the, what are some of the strongholds? The philosophies. People have a philosophy about everything. The arguments, the proud opinions are strongholds. And without, question, without thought, without question, there are many human thoughts that need to be taken captive. There are many thoughts in our mind that well, I just don't understand. I don't understand. I just don't understand. Well, Lord, show me. I beseech you, Jesus, show me. Show me where I'm lacking that. Show me, oh, un, open up my understanding. Un, enlighten my understanding. And don't you know God will lead you directly to the scripture that will enlighten your understanding? But if we're a person that love drama, they love to keep stuff going. We would just keep it going. I just don't understand. But that, you know, and you got to go over here. I don't understand. I don't understand. And then you start sowing what? Discord. Sowing discord. That thought became in your mind, got in your heart, came out your mouth, and you start sowing seeds of discord. We must take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. John 8 and 36. John 8 and 36 says, if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. If the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And it didn't say make you free, it sets you free. Jesus came to set us free. But you got to understand that it is a true spiritual battle. The, the, the strongholds that the enemy tried to build up in our mind. Those who know the truth must confront error with the weapons that we have been given. We'll be given the weapon of the sword of the spirit. When we look at Ephesians 6 and 17 and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Our weapons in the spiritual battle are not carnal. We don't fight with guns and knives with our mouths, but they are, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And we must pray that we be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Every time we pray, every time we pray, pray we should be saying, Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my mind. If there's any thought, anything that's not pleasing to you, take it out because I want to be whole. I want to be real. I want to be true. Romans 12 and, 12, and 10 say, 12 and 2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. If our prayer daily is, Lord, renew our mind. If we keep praying that transformation would take place within us. We must take every thought captive, pull down the strongholds, and by the grace of God, we will be set free. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Some things have been built up as a stronghold in our lives. But I've come to tell you with the word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost and with prayer, that stronghold can come down, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Father, we thank you for the word of God that has been shared on tonight. Father, we ask that you will renew our minds. Any thought that is not pleasing to you, God, that we have been entertaining, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we release it, we give it to you. Oh, the power of the Holy Ghost cleanse our mind. Set us free in the name of Jesus. Pulling down those strongholds that have built up in our lives, built up in our families. We pull it down now with the word of God. We will apply the word of God to every stronghold, to every thought that is against the word of God. And we thank you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.